Didysaurus, Living Legend by Sunny Brooks. Down in the bottom of the sock drawer, Dora could not sleep. She had a very big pain in her small Didysaurus belly. Wrestling with the neat balls of freshly washed socks, she moaned, Oh! Oh! This went on for ages. Suddenly she jumped up. Fred! Fred! Wake up! I've laid an egg! Through his half-open eyes, Fred could see a beautiful purple egg. A, a baby! A baby! We're going to have a baby! He cried. They were so excited, they danced round and round, only stopping for a big family hug with each other and the egg. For a few days, all was quiet in Tim's sock drawer. Instead of going flying in the garden and dining out on some juicy leaves, Dora stayed with her egg and Fred brought her food. I could get used to meals on wings deliveries, she said as she waited patiently for her egg to hatch. It's the least I could do, replied Fred. You'll have your claws full when this little one arrives. Fred never said a truer word. The next morning, the egg began to crack. A tiny snout sniffed the air. It cracked further and out tumbled claws, limbs, folded wings and a head with big green eyes. The eyes stared around slowly. Then the tiny Didysaurus shook himself. Cool! Not much room in there, he said, stretching out his little legs. That's better. You must be Mum and Dad. Dora was delighted. He talks. Oh, isn't he clever? Isn't he cute? Clever, yes. Cute? Definitely not, said the baby angrily. Hey, hold on a minute, Squirt. No need to get cross with your mum, said Fred. Squirt. Yes, I like it. Squirt. That's a great name. I'm called Squirt. He bounced around. Dad was only calling you a nickname, explained Dora. You can have a proper name like John or James if you like. Yuck! No way, he said. Squirt is going to be my name forever. The boy knows what he wants, love, remarked Fred. He certainly does, agreed Dora proudly. What's for breakfast then? asked Squirt. I'm starving. Well, we have to get out into the garden to munch on leaves and grass, said Dad. It's going to be too difficult for you to manage yet. Stay here with Mum and I'll bring you some. Squirt watched as his dad disappeared behind a large sock ball and quickly he was gone. Whilst he was away, Mum explained that they lived in a drawer that wouldn't close properly and Tim's bedroom window was always left slightly open. That's how they got out. They had to scramble up the socks, climb out of the drawer, fly up to the window ledge, then out into the garden. Dad was back quickly with a mouthful of fresh leaves to feed his hungry son. Squirt took one mouthful and the whole world shook and shuddered as the old wooden drawer was pulled open. A young boy's fingers grabbed a sock ball from somewhere up above them. The Didysaurus family lay down, 
perfectly still. Squirt could taste the juice from the leaves on his tongue and longed to continue his breakfast, but he dared not move. Through the open drawer, they could hear a distant, shouty voice. Just hurry up, Tim. We've got to go. Nearly ready, a much nearer voice said. Then the whole world shook again and the family had to dodge the big sock balls rolling round. Squirt swallowed his mouthful. <coughs> what was that? Just him getting his socks, Mum answered. It happens every day. Phew, that was a rough ride, said Squirt. Huh, you think that was rough, lad? You don't know you're born, said Dad. Me and your mum have been through many thousands of years of hard times. How old are you, Dad? asked Squirt. I've got no idea anymore, Dad replied. I lost count after all those centuries. It was so long ago when I was a little nipper. Our family goes back to the beginning of time. No wonder my old bones ache some days. It was a good time for us then. Plenty of lovely big plants to eat. So are we dinosaurs? Squirt asked. We certainly are said Dad proudly, whilst munching on his leaves. A tiny species about the size of a human finger. I've measured myself against Tim's mum's fingers when she refills his sock drawer. But, but we've got wings, exclaimed the puzzled youngster. Yes, we're a strange mixture. We can fly... But we look like a lizard, said Mum. We were related to the pterosaurs who flew and the sauropods who walked. Dad sighed and spoke sadly, remembering back a very, very long time ago. Oh, never forget those gigantic cousins. As far as we know, they're all gone now. Extinct, they say. Gentle giants they were. The most enormous animals could eat from the tops of trees easily. You mean ones like the Brachiosaurus and the Burrosaurus, said Mum. They were the largest animals ever to walk on the earth. It made my neck ache and I got dizzy looking up at them. Huh? But again, they wouldn't harm anyone. Dad continued to tell the story of how they survived through the centuries. When we were a bit older, this chap called Noah was around. He built this gigantic boat called an ark and took his family and two of each animal on the earth onto his boat. We thought it was a bit strange because it was nowhere near the sea. Squirt nodded. It did seem very odd. Well, anyway, we thought a holiday would do us good and had always fancied a cruise. There was every animal you could think of on that boat, from snakes to elephants, from goats to gorillas. I never liked those snakes. <sniffs> he pulled a scary face, which made Squirt <laughs> laugh. Of course, our full-grown, gigantic dinosaur cousins were too big. So pairs of their young ones who were much smaller went aboard. We were the only two Diddysaurus to go. Oh, it could be a bit noisy <laughs> and smelly with all those animals. We spent much of our time hiding in a brown bear's furry coat. We felt safe there. Squirt imagined his mum and dad, all warm and cosy, snuggled up in the bear's fur. They were so small, he probably wouldn't even notice they were there. 
Mum continued the long story quickly. Well, we just knew we had to get on board that boat as quickly as we could. It looked like a big storm was brewing. Boy, what a storm it was. I've never seen anything like it. It rained and rained and rained. It didn't stop raining day or night for weeks and weeks. Oh, day after day, night after night, you could hear it pounding down on the roof of the ark. It was difficult to get any sleep. It was quite scary. We wondered if it would ever stop raining again. Mum's face looked very sad and there was a little tear in her eye. Finally, when it did stop, we managed to climb up a giraffe's long neck and look out of the window. You won't believe what we saw. Just water. Water everywhere. It had covered the whole earth and drowned everything we knew before. There were no more trees, no more lovely vegetation for our food, no more people, no more animals all gone. Many of our big dinosaur cousins were quickly buried in the mud under all that water and their skeletons are still being found today. (laughs) Dad put his wing around Mum as she gently sobbed. Squirt felt upset for his mum and dad. It must have been awful seeing nothing but water and knowing that your whole world had been drowned. Dad sadly took over the story. After the flood, it took weeks for all the water to go down so that we could get off the ark. Life was never the same after that. There wasn't much growing for a while to feed all the animals and some of them started to eat each other. Many dinosaurs and other animals died out altogether. Some became meat eaters like Tyrannosaurus. Oh, that must have been really scary, thinking that something might gobble you up, said Squirt. Ho, 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 you had to watch out for T-Rex. But we would only be a little nibble, like a salted peanut to a monstrous animal like that. After the flood... All sorts of things happened, like a long ice age. Earthquakes and volcanoes, continued Dad. They were very worrying times when the earth moved around a lot. Oh, we have lived through some terrible times and seen huge changes, but we live to tell the tale. Dad stopped to have a little chew on his leaves and think about more recent times. He had such a long memory. Over many centuries, with many wars and disasters, life did settle down. We usually had to hide ourselves from the humans. Oh, we couldn't do with a fuss of them. Discovering dinosaurs still exist. (laughs) It was a very good day when we found our way into Tim's house and his sock drawer, and we could settle down in our old age. We have lived here happily ever since. Squirt's mind was working overtime, thinking of the fascinating but terrible times his mum and dad had lived through. A bit of a bumpy ride when a drawer opened and closed, and a few socks rolling around was nothing really. Each day, Squirt grew stronger in his cosy home. After thinking about all the adventures his dad and mum had had in their very long lives, he decided it was time for him to start exploring too. Late one afternoon, whilst mum and dad had a nap, he got out of the drawer by himself. Slowly, he climbed up the socks and stood on tiptoes on the top one peeping out. The world looked brighter outside the drawer, but not too scary. He let himself drop to the floor, landed 
rolled into a ball and kept rolling right under Tim's desk. He hit a metal cage and looked up to see something scratching and sniffing. Squirt saw two black eyes and a pointy, quivering nose and squealed, A mouse! The mouse squealed back, Effing magic, whatever you are! Both ran and hid. When he felt safe again, Squirt tried to reach the window ledge. He took a run and flapped his wings madly, but nothing happened. He tried again and again. He still couldn't get off the ground. Mum and Dad made it look so easy, but they had had thousands of years to practice. Next time, he made a really big effort, stretching out his neck, lifting himself. His feet left the ground and he rose higher and higher. I did it! I did it! I'm flying! He yelled. My parents will be amazed! Squirt was up by the ceiling, circling the room. I'm coming in to land, he thought, heading for the window ledge. If I can fly, landing should be easy. Landing wasn't easy at all. <coughs> Squirt crashed into the glass, rolled along the ledge and straight through the open window. He used his claws to cling onto the outside ledge. <coughs> he hung there for a long time, calling for help. Help! Help! But none came. He thought of how brave his mum and dad had been. Well, you wanted adventure? So here goes, he told himself. Realising we'd have to use his new flying skills, he slowly and carefully uncurled one claw, then another, then another, until he couldn't hold on any longer. He flapped his wings and soared high above the ground. Wow! This is great, said Squirt. Wait until I show Mum and Dad. <laughs> With a little more practice, he soon learned how to land safely and strutted around the garden, nibbling on leaves and grass until he was full. Then... From nowhere, there was a horrible, wailing, yowling sound. And he saw the biggest, bluest eyes ever staring at him. As he backed away, he saw masses of white fur and a swishing tail. In a flash, he grabbed the tail and it swung him upwards and away. He flew higher and looked down to see a very puzzled cat looking for the strange-looking prey she had been stalking. By now, it was going dark, and Squirt was getting tired. <coughs> he rested in a big tree for a while. There was a rustling in the leaves. <coughs> What now? thought Squirt. I just want to go home. Who's there? He asked in a trembling voice. Only me? said the owl. Who are you? I'm Squirt. I'm a Didysaurus. A small dinosaur. Ooh, well now, Squirt. I'm very pleased to meet you, said the owl. I'm a wise old bird, but I've never met a dinosaur before. The old owl made Squirt very welcome in his nest, and he stayed for a long time telling the story of his parents' survival from the beginning of time until the present day. Finally, 
the owl nodded wisely, wished him good night, and thanked him for his wonderful story. It was now very dark, and Squirt lost his way. He flew straight into a bat hanging under the eaves. Why don't you look where you're going? complained the angry bat. The situation got worse. He found Tim's bedroom window, but it was shut tight. He searched and searched for an opening. He pushed his claws in and tried to prise it open, but it wouldn't budge. He was locked out. Squirt cried and cried. He was only a baby after all. What started as a big adventure had turned into a disaster. He wanted his mum and dad. The bat saw what happened and felt sorry for him. He took Squirt to the rooftop and suggested going down the chimney. Although he was a bit worried, Squirt knew it was the only way and carefully made his way down and down the chimney. It was very dark and scary. He didn't like all the soot on the walls, but he could see a little light which got nearer and nearer as he climbed down. Suddenly, he was in the fireplace in the living room and as black as a bat from all the soot. Tim's family were watching TV as he sneaked past. There were a few tricky moments as they thought they heard something and turned around. Squirt's hiding places were very uncomfortable. The plant prickled him and the lamp nearly burned his bottom. He flew upstairs. The first room had a big double bed and no open drawers. The next had shiny surfaces and drippy taps. It wasn't cosy, but he managed to wash off all the soot. Finally, he found Tim's room and the slightly open drawer. Mum and Dad were so pleased to see him. He told them all about his adventures and about the mouse, the cat, the owl and the bat. He told them the window was closed tightly and he had to come down the chimney and sneak past Tim's family watching TV. Best of all, they were amazed that he had learned to fly all by himself. It couldn't compare with their long, long years of adventures, but it was a start. They were so happy to see him again that they only told him off a little bit and he promised to be more careful in future. The next day, when the dinosaurs were just going out for lunch, the world started shaking and shuddering. A voice was muttering about fixing that drawer. There was a big rummage in the socks. The Didysaurus family lay absolutely still. Then she saw them. Tim's mum's long-fingered hand lifted them out. Oh, these little dinosaurs look so real, she said. She put them in a toy box with plastic toy dinosaurs and closed the lid. Well, that's it, said Dad. We've survived all those centuries only to die in a box of plastic dinosaurs. We'll be fine, said Mum, but she wasn't really sure. When Tim came home from school, his mum told him about the dinosaurs in the sock drawer. He rushed upstairs, grabbed the family from the toy box and examined them closely. Don't play dead with me, he said. I know you're real. I've been watching you all my life and now you've had a baby too. Oh, please don't hurt us, said Fred. We didn't mean to trick you. I won't hurt you, Tim said. Please stay and play with me. It's awesome to have real dinosaurs. So the Didysaurus family did stay and play and they told Tim their long, amazing story. He made a false bottom in his drawer so they could hide under it from his mum and falling socks. Squirt was still full of fun and adventure and now he had someone fun to play with. <laughs>
only a small boy called Tim knows the secret of the Didysaurus dinosaurs, and he won't tell. Will you? Shh.